Aloha. Welcome back to another episode of Talk Story with John Waihe'e. Have we got a special guest for you this afternoon? Taking time from his very busy schedule, dealing with the great and great problems of the state of Hawaii, we have with us the governor of the state of Hawaii, Governor David Ige. Welcome, Governor. It's a pleasure to have you on our show. I think we had you once about a year or so ago. But yes, thank you. It's thank good you to so have much you. for inviting me. Well, you know, obviously people are right in the midst of dealing with the coronavirus crisis. So we might as well just go right into that subject. Um, I know that this afternoon you had a press conference. If you don't yes. mind, why don't, could you just kind of update us to what was announced at the press conference? Sure. Uh, and let me just, I just really do want to take a step back, Governor, because I do want to thank uh, all of your, um, all of those uh, watching your program and, and who may be um, listening uh, live on audio. I just wanted to thank uh, each and every one of you uh, for your commitment to the state of Hawaii, for really doing all the things that are so necessary to control the virus and really flatten the curve. You oh, know, Hawaii leads you. the nation uh, in the response to the COVID virus because we have, you know, the lowest number of cases per capita. We have the uh, very low hospitalization, which, you know, demonstrates that um, our healthcare system is taking care of the disease. Uh, and we are fortunate in that uh, we have a, amongst the lowest uh, mortality rate in the country. Uh, and I think that's really because uh, every citizen has taken on the responsibility of doing what they can to help fight the virus. Thank you, Governor. Thank you for that. And I know that the listeners, uh, the Think Tech listeners appreciate that. And um, and we also <laughs> thank you for the work that you're doing. Uh, where are we? Uh, what what was uh, the purpose of the press conference? So the press conference uh, focused on two two uh, important um, uh, things. Uh, first and foremost, we did launch the Hawaii Recovery Plan Beyond Recovery, which really laid out. Uh, our phases for restoring the local economy. Uh, I think it was very important. I know that there's been uh, lots of conversations of competing plans and different uh, people and organizations uh, working on uh, different efforts to uh, restart and reopen Hawaii. And um, the plan I announced was in conjunction with uh, Mark Muguishi and the speakers, um, COVID response uh, task force. Uh, we had um, broad uh, participation by uh, various stakeholder groups, um, many in the business community, um, and obviously the state agencies and the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency all collaborated on uh, this re Beyond Recovery Plan. Uh, so it was a great uh, effort, um, teamwork on all fronts um, that got us to this place of a uh, common, thoughtful, and phrase, um, phased uh, reopening of the Hawaii economy that will allow us to um, increase business activity in a safe way. Um, we do anticipate that the number of COVID um, positives will go up. Um, slightly, but we are prepared and able to uh, test, um, do contact tracing, and most importantly, uh, contain any um, virus infections that we may see occur. Okay, so the plan is, is announced. Does that mean one of the first questions I received uh, from one of our listeners was he, uh, he or she wanted to know whether uh, and I assume that uh, that has happened, but let you know. Let me uh, see. And the question was: Has Hawaii's uh, curve flattened? I mean, are we? F I, yes. In fact, yes, most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. And um, 
you know, there's been a number of uh, websites across the country that tracks uh, all of the COVID positive and all of the data that every state is, um, is producing. And Hawaii is just one of seven states that actually over the last uh, three weeks have had um, lower and lower um, total positive COVID um, cases uh, across the country. So by uh, every measure of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, Hawaii is definitely um, trending lower. And I think most importantly, uh, we've been doing that for now three full weeks and feel like the, um, the COVID-19 infection in our community is uh, contained and under control. And, and Governor, if I may ask you, is that pretty much across the whole state? I mean, every island is in that situation, including Oahu, which has the greatest number of people. Yes, and, and you know, uh, Governor, three, two weeks ago, I wouldn't be able to say that. And um, Oahu continued to get um, um, cases of COVID-19. But uh, beginning uh, last week and continuing in this week, uh, even Oahu, the number of cases on Oahu, uh, there will be days where there's no cases at all. Uh, and the number of cases has been one or two or three, um, at least for the last two weeks. So uh, all counties um, are definitely um, very low single digits, less than five per day. Now, is are, is there, in, in terms of the phase, the, the phase recovery plan, is there, um, when, when do you think or what uh, you hope uh, will be the timeline for returning or allowing uh, intra-island flights, just yeah. in-state uh, travel? Yeah, so certainly uh, inter-island, um, uh, the whole issue of the inter-island quarantine, um, actually I had a call with the mayors uh, this morning and we really, I told them I really wanted to talk about inter-island travel you know, I've uh, had questions from uh, people I know uh, on the neighbor islands. You know, I think everyone knows of, um, you know, a relative or friend who's passed away. You know, uh, funeral services have been delayed. Um, a wide variety of reasons that normally we would be traveling inter-island, but uh, has been um, put on hold because of the quarantine. Uh, so we definitely um, are talking about it more seriously, uh, talking about what uh, safeguards and screening processes need to be in place. Uh, and then we will be uh, making an, an, an announcement on inter-island travel, uh, I would say in the next week or so. You know, they, uh, as I said, and you, you, know, you asked whether every county is, is the same, I think now all the counties are the same. The number of cases have uh, been below five in all of the counties, even uh, city and county of Honolulu. So I think all the mayors feel more comfortable with the notion of allowing inter-island travel. So part of the discussion, for example, would be, you know, how far, how close people should be in, uh, in situations like an airplane. Or the like, I, I presume. I, I'm, yeah. you know, not up on all of this, so I, I, I that's actually a question, Governor. I mean, yeah. what are some of no. the safety? So, records? so, so, a couple of things. You know, there's actually lots of um, CDC guidance on uh, travel in air airplanes, and you know, I would like to note that um, because of the regulations and how much they control circulation of air and, and all kinds of things on an airplane, um, it is relatively safe. And it's, it hasn't been, um, I can't think of a single uh, case where we um, uh, can track back to an individual uh, getting infected on a flight. So, um, you know, I know the perception is that um, COVID-19 is tied to travel, but it's more um, residents traveling somewhere and then getting infected on the mainland and then traveling back home. Um, but um, it is- Yeah, you make sure your omiyagi is something healthy, right? <laughs> yes, 
<laughs> and, um, you know, uh, Governor, I did have the chance to talk with um, um, people at Hawaiian Airlines, and they are going, they are being very um, cautious and respectful of people's concerns about safety. So they are, even though they're not required to explicitly uh, implement uh, social distancing, they've chosen to you know, spread people uh, around the aircraft, um, you know, even on weekends that I think you uh, knew and saw uh, increased traffic on Mondays and Fridays by construction workers and, and other um, uh, employees who uh, go to do work on the neighbor islands. Uh, and uh, Hawaiian has uh, really um, implemented uh, social distancing on their flights. They've even added flights, even though the planes are less than half full, they chose to go ahead and add another flight uh, so that they could space uh, the travelers apart and they don't have people sitting um, in adjacent rows or in adjacent seats. Uh, and so uh, definitely during this time, I think it's um, safe to travel uh, inter-island uh, once we allow it to happen. Well, that's great, Governor. You know, I, I can tell you, though, that um, we opened up the beaches, I guess, this weekend, at least on Oahu. And so, yeah. uh, my, uh, you know, I took a drive. My wife and I got in the car and took a drive. And people were so happy to be yes. out <laughs> and about. And, you know, people, for the most part, were still complying with the... Uh, the, the, the social distancing, wearing the mask when they were yeah. away from the water, you know, things like that. Uh, but uh, how, how, how did all of that turn out? Is that something that it looks like we, we're going to have and will be working for a while? Yeah, certainly, uh, you know, Governor, and you know, you, you served as governor for, for eight years. And yeah, you by the know... way, you still cut, that office still looks great with you in it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm looking you. at my old backstop. <laughs> yes, yes, it's still the same one. But, but you know, um, the people of Hawaii really have a sense of community, and they understand the kuleana, and they are more than willing to embrace it. Uh, you know, and in this COVID-19 crisis, I am so proud to be governor of Hawaii because it is so obvious that everybody is paying attention, they are taking the mandate seriously, they're distancing themselves. You know, in other states, they're fighting about whether they have to wear a mask or not, but everyone here, as soon as we said, it's safer for everyone to wear a mask, everybody was out uh, making masks, you know, doing all of the things that they need to do to keep our community safe. Uh, and and you, like you said, you saw it on the beaches, I did uh, talk with the mayor Caldwell and, you know, he was very nervous about opening the beaches. I think we all are because, you know, we see the photos in, in California and Miami, you know, the chaos that uh, reopening the beaches has caused on the mainland with everybody just piling on and not really listening. Uh, but in Hawaii, people um, paid attention and they were in uh, family groups, you know, they, right. they distanced um, away from each other six feet. And, you know, so it was obvious that we could reopen the beaches and not see the chaos that was uh, created on the mainland. And that, you know, that makes me proud. Uh, it assures me that um, our people will comply because we all understand how important that for each of us to do uh, our part in keeping our community safe. Well, thank you, Governor. We're going to take a real short break at this time, and we sure. will be right back.
Here we are with the governor of the state of Hawaii, David Ige, talking about the state of the COVID coronavirus pandemic in Hawaii. You know, Governor, I, I had somebody um, from the, um, the mainland, a friend of mine, sent me an uh, email, and he said, oh, wow, what's happening? They arrested these people in Hawaii, you know. And I said, you know, we are really serious about, uh, about uh, you know, doing things that will keep our population uh, uh, healthy. I said, you know, we have the lowest, I, 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 I was aware of that, the lowest um, contagion, contagious and debt rate in, in the whole nation. And we're proud of that. And so, you know, someday when we reopen tra uh, travel to Hawaii, the people are going to be coming to the healthiest place on the, in the United States. And I said, that's something that we can really be uh, build on, you know. And I, I know yeah. that you have been um, working on uh, this issue with the, uh, with the travel industry in Hawaii, but uh, are there plans, are, you know, plans being drawn up to see, uh, to see, foresee a time when we yes. might be allowing uh, tourists back into our state. Yeah, you know, certainly, um, uh, Governor, we, we know that um, uh, one in five jobs is dependent on the visitor industry. Uh, and really most of them are uh, unemployed right now. So uh, we need to bring our visitors back. Uh, there are um, a number of states that have actually ordered a mandatory quarantine, uh, but for the most part, it's all lip service in other states. Hawaii is the only state that actually is enforcing um, and truly implemented a 14-day uh, mandatory quarantine. So, you know, as you noted, uh, we've been working with the counties and the police departments all across the state uh, and working with state law enforcement uh, in the sheriff's and the attorney general's office to really put some teeth behind the, the Hawaii uh, mandatory quarantine. Uh, so for example, we did get the courts to agree um, that uh, when we make a, an arrest, um, they were just releasing um, the violators uh, with no bail at all. Uh, and we were able to talk with the chief justice and just explain that you know, they have to um, impose a, a $2,000 um, bail uh, because if they don't, if they just release them, uh, then it makes a mockery of the mandatory quarantine. Uh, so that has helped us with enforcement. And as you noted, uh, we are serious and we have arrested. You know, we, we've done a couple things. Uh, we want, if they, they need to have a confirmed reservation, in a hotel in order for them to be here. Uh, and we do make sure that they uh, have a reservation and confirmation for the entire period of quarantine. If they leave before the 14 days is up, then we require them to have a con confirmation on a flight out of Hawaii uh, so that, uh, you know, what was happening is people would come uh, check into the hotel for a day and then just check out and disappear uh, and then we would lose them and we wouldn't be uh, certain of where they were. Uh, yeah. So even though many states have ordered a quarantine, uh, only Hawaii has really implemented them and uh, really uh, made it effective. Um, we have been working with the visitor industry and what I tell them is we need to reinvent the hospitality industry in light of this COVID-19 uh, experience. and. I really tell them that it'll never be the same. You know, we have to uh, reinvent uh, every aspect. And, you know, it's been heartwarming to meet with hotel industry executives and hear them talk about, uh, as you said, they want to, the brand of Hawaii to be enhanced uh, COVID, uh, post COVID-19. They want to be the self, uh, safest and healthiest uh, hotels. Uh, they want to be able to assure their guests that, um, that uh, they can get 
uh, health care and help if they should uh, become ill in the islands. Uh, and I think most importantly, they want to let the local residents know that they will be partners uh, in enforcing the quarantine, uh, in enforcing any kind of program that we need to put in place to keep our community safe and allow visitors to return. Uh, good, so really, um, that's what we've been working on with the airlines, with the hotels, with the um, travel agents and the uh, tour companies, all partners in creating a better hospitality industry in Hawaii. That, that's fantastic. I mean, how many societies have a chance to redo something, something important like that? You know, it's so interesting to me, but there are people, there's, I saw on the internet, there is this Aina Aloha declaration about using this opportunity to um, make things more like Hawaii in the, in the, in the future, you know, and I was just thinking, wouldn't it be wonderful if this gave us a, a, a moment when we can, uh, when we not only enhance the health of our industry in terms of its uh, tourists uh, coming here, but also an opportunity to, for example, use local products, you know, emphasizing yes. the need to be self-sufficient. Uh, I, I think of the, the cattle ranchers on the big island who send their uh, cattle off to the mainland to be brought back to, you know, sold in Safeway and, and the, uh, in, the, in the stores. And yet by all working together, maybe we might first uh, achieve a moment when the industry and the society seems to be uh, running in the same direction. I, I think there's some, there's a reason to look for the silver lining, I guess that I'm saying. Yeah. And the uh, Aloha, yeah, Aina Aloha was just one of those opportunities. Yeah, and I, I guess yeah. that's what you're trying to tell me. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely correct, uh, Governor. And we are definitely working in every facet uh, with, the, with the farmers here to promote self-reliance. You know, we actually want to challenge the ranching industry to stop sending um, um, cattle to the mainland for finishing and just have it sold here. We're trying to get our public schools to be 100% uh, self-sufficient. Uh, we actually uh, have figured out the procurement. And so we're very close for like beef to be all locally sourced for all of the public schools uh, all across the state 100% of the time. Uh, so, uh, yes, we are using uh, this opportunity to really accelerate our commitment to self-reliance, uh, to being, uh, being a better industry, uh, for the uh, visitor industry to truly be partners with our community and our residents in uh, recreating a better Hawaii movement. Yeah, get forward. off the numbers. It's not about numbers, it's about quality. And I, I hear that more and more uh, as we you know, go through all of this, that this is a chance for us to do something that demonstrates Hawaii's specialness. And I'm so glad you're taking the leadership on that. Yes, absolutely. And it's uh, the response has been terrific. So. You know, one of the notions that we're talking about in this phase, as we um, hopefully can get to a place of allowing inter-island travel, it's really focusing on the Kamaina economy and encouraging our residents uh, to experience a staycation in the new hospitality industry 2.0. Uh, yeah, so that they can experience and see what the, the hotels are going to be doing to keep uh, the guests safe. And I think most importantly, uh, to keep our community safe, to um, put in place health requirements that would uh, keep sick people in the hotels and separated from uh, other guests as well as uh, um, the local residents. Well, I gotta ask you this, Gov. It, it, you know, what, I didn't think that I would ever say this in my, you know, in my life actually. But when I was much younger, my hair was down to my shoulders, you know, and I used to be all fuzzy. And one of the things that I have missed during this uh, period, social distancing period, is my haircut, you know. And, uh, you know, you and I have this mustache yes. hair thing, and my wife is already threatening to uh, just cut it off herself, you know. Uh, <laughs> 
when do you think we'll be able to have those kinds of services brought back, if uh, or, or yeah. if at all? Well, so, so certainly, Governor, we've evaluated all the businesses and uh, industries uh, in terms of risk. Uh, and restaurants and personal services. So hair salons, hairdressers, barber shops are considered medium risk businesses. Um, and so uh, we are actually uh, very close to restarting um, all of those activities. Uh, County of Maui uh, has announced that they're going to allow uh, barber shops and hair salons to reopen on May 25th. Oh, great. Um, yeah. So. Uh, and I'm certain that um, I hope the, the airlines the, get there. <laughs> I'll fly over the mile yes. and cut this hair. Of a, yes, so, keep peace and, in my and, family. You know, Governor, I just want to let you know my hair was getting too long for me, and Don cut my hair this weekend. Well, if uh, I because, may, if I wear a mask and I come over to the governor's res residence, <laughs> I, I certainly will let her know that she might have a second customer uh, <laughs> yeah, very it's not soon. Bad. It looks really good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, she did a good job. I was very, very nervous, um, but she seems to have done a good job. Are you keeping in touch with uh, with your with your children and how they're doing? In uh, I I know they're I guess they're in Washington, right? Or, or... yeah, well, so I as as you know, Gov, I have three uh, kids. My oldest daughter Lauren is in Washington D.C. on lockdown. Yeah, she's kind of stir stir crazy. I'm my middle daughter, Amy. Uh, she's married to my son-in-law, Anthony, is a Navy pilot. And he just got deployed to Japan oh. uh, last week. So she's kind of on her own. She's living in Mount Vernon uh, in Washington State. It's about uh, 45 minutes uh, north of Seattle. And, and my son, youngest son, Matthew, is uh, working for Microsoft in, um, in Bellevue. Uh, and he was just informed that Microsoft will let them work from home uh, until October. So I'm really encouraging him to come home because <laughs> he can. And he can work from Hawaii or he can work from home. But I don't think I'll be successful. <laughs> well, you know, for all families that are listening to us and all families going through that, we obviously wish them the best. And we wish you and your family the best, Governor, and we look forward to your leadership as we uh, come out of this crisis. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me, and I appreciate it. Thank you, and aloha.